Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Solid topic? Let's do it. Parents of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing your child has ever said to you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When my daughter was three, she came home from preschool one day, and her demeanor changed the minute we came home. She became very withdrawn and looked very upset. I asked her what was wrong and she said, the angel on the roof is angry with us. Not my kid, but my friends. They were across the country visiting family and out for a drive. Her four-year-old points down an old overgrown road, more of a dirt track, and says, that was where I used to go to school. She told him he didn't even go to school yet. She mentioned it to her brother when they drove by another day. And he told her that well down that track used to be a schoolhouse in the 1800s. The same kid was on a walk with mom in our town around a fairly wooded pond. He asked his mom if they could go another way. She said there was only one path and asked why. He responded, I don't like that man hanging from the tree. Needless to say, they moved away from that area very quickly. A few weeks after my son turned two, he told me, look, the smoke dissipates. This is not a word in our daily vernacular, so I asked him what that meant, and he said, it disappears. Impressed, I asked him where you learned that word, and he replied, when I was an adult. I laughed and asked him when you were an adult, and without missing a beat, he answered, before I was born. My toddler, two and a half years old, recently shared a ghost sighting with us. She has done it before, but usually not so confidently. We try very hard not to show her how interested we are because we don't want her to start making things up. More than she already is, hopefully speaking, lol. Anyway, she stopped mid-play with my husband and me the other day and completely had a mood shift. We had been all making Play-Doh ice cream and laughing and talking. She stopped, looked to her right, and set down her ice cream to wave. She said, hi ghost. Pleasantly, she just smiled, was suddenly much more quiet and observant, more calm and not as lost in the playing, similar to how we'd be if someone passed by us in public or interrupted for a brief moment. You're still in a good mood, but you're not going to rudely keep playing instead of saying hello if that makes sense. It was an open spot on the floor above our basement stairs. She was looking slightly up, so it would have to have been about the height of an older kid or taller and standing on the stairs. We both slowed down what we were doing, made eye contact, and said, There's a ghost. And she says, Yes, right there. All smiles. We nonchalantly went, Oh, there you are. Hey, ghost. She didn't even incorporate it into her game or make any more of a deal about it. She just started up her ice cream making again and let it be. I think the scary part comes from not knowing what's going on in her little mind. Not even the ghost part, because clearly it's quite peaceful. I think babies and toddlers are so close to the other side, whatever that is or whatever that even means. While I don't have kids, I trust my mom regarding my sister. Two unusual things happened when she was around two and a half months old. She spoke early and at an advanced level very young. One day my sister tells my mom that she misses the place before this one. My mom doesn't understand and she asks what she means. I was with the light before here, my sister offered helpfully. Not really understanding still, my mom asks if she meant before like yesterday or last week. Her bed? My sister shakes her head and says, before everything, the light. It's very comfortable there. Mom was weirded out by it, but kids say weird stuff, so she chalked it up to that. Until Christmas. My sister is now in her early 40s. The internet was not a thing when we were babies in the early 80s. She was not in daycare, as my mom stayed home with us for a few years. I say this to preface the lack of exposure to what's coming. The day before Christmas Eve, when my sister was two and ten months old, she told my mom, I really want a camel for Christmas. My mom is kind of shaken. She's never been exposed to camels. She has no idea where my sister got the word or even if she really understood what a camel was. 
but just in case, my mom took her shitty sewing skills into the laundry room, where her old sewing machine is. She cuts out a dromedary camel using two pieces of brown fabric and sewn them together with some cotton balls. She gives the crappy, nearly 2D camel a couple of button eyes and a mouth of uneven back stitching. Christmas morning comes, and my sister opens up this stupid-looking homemade camel. But without missing a beat, she giggles and exclaims, Oh good, it's Omar, my camel! If my parents didn't expose her to camels, they absolutely didn't expose her to Middle Eastern names. Yet, that's what my sister decided her camel would be called. Now, the last odd factor. My sister and I are not biologically related. We're both adopted. I'm a Hispanic guy of Mexican ancestry, though really my genetics trace back to old imperial Spain. But my sister? Yeah, my sister is Syrian and East Indian. Later, I asked my mom if I had said anything weird. Maybe I asked for churros or really wanted a chihuahua or something, but no. My mom shook her head and told me I was essentially silent as a baby. I didn't really cry and didn't really fuss. I was in foster care for a while before the adoption and apparently my first foster home wasn't great. And though I spoke fairly early as well, I didn't say much, but I understood plenty, yet I didn't make any creepy requests or have any otherworldly regimes or insights like my sister. And so my journey to disappoint my parents began. My little friend went through a phase of telling dark stories when she was three or four. She was also really into playing games and taking her toys to the doctor. We were playing and she said, this toy is really scared of the doctor and I said, why? Doctors are there to help us or something like that. She said, he's scared because this is the bad nurse. She gives him medicine so he can't move or scream and then cuts him open and takes his insides out. I was just like, yeah, that's a good reason to be scared. We have no idea where she came up with that stuff. She's six now and all her stories are about fairies and princesses. I kind of miss her dark stories. They were more creative, even though some kept me up at night. That's a pretty creative child, a little freaky. Maybe go for like a creative writing class or, I don't know, maybe she's seen some wild stuff. My four-year-old told me a few weeks ago that she remembers her popo from a long time ago. He was a really smart guy. She was conceived about a week after my husband's father passed away. A couple of nights ago, she was sleeping in my bed while my husband was working out of town, and she sat up from a dead sleep and said, Popo is here. She laid down and went right back to sleep. We never call him by that name. My husband says my dad, or I call him by his actual name. The name she said was given by his other grandchildren, which we very rarely see. Not my kid, but when my son was in kindergarten, there was one kid, Jerry, not his real name, who was constantly bullying my son and others. I helped out in the classroom a lot, and I was always asking Jerry to stop doing this. At the class winter holiday party that year, I was helping kids make ornaments to take home to their parents. When it was Jerry's group's turn, he pointed the blunt-nosed scissors at me and said, I'm going to cut your eyes out. I told him, uh, no, we don't do stuff like that. I made sure my son wasn't in Jerry's class for first grade, and the district transferred us to a different school for second through fifth grade. They redrew the attendance zones, and we were no longer in the zone for the same school Jerry was in. About the time my son was in third grade, I heard Jerry's parents had to pay for a this is why we don't do our shit lecture from the entire school. Why? Jerry had gone into the bathroom near the art classroom, taken damp paper towels, shoved them into the electrical hand dryer, and held down the button in hopes that the paper towels would either 
be short out the fryer or dryer or catch on fire. A couple years after that, so around 5th or 6th grade, I heard Jerry's parents had him transferred to a local charter school that was known for the place you sent your kid if you wanted them to end up in juvie because it was uh, the one school that would take the kids after they'd been kicked out of the regular schools for bad behavior and drugs, etc. The last thing I heard you say was Jerry was sent into the military after his high school graduation to try and straighten his ass out. I'm not a parent, but I was watching my two-year-old niece one night. I was putting her to bed when she looked over my shoulder and said, Who's that? I looked behind me and said, Who? She said, The man behind you. He was standing behind you in the kitchen, too. We were the only ones home. I spent the rest of the evening in the living room on the other chair with its back to the wall, glancing nervously around. A few months after my mom passed, my daughter was sitting in the TV room. She looked down the hall and I could tell something caught her eye. She got up and said, Yaya's in her room, and proceeded to go into my mom's room and shut the door. I could hear my daughter talking and laughing through the door. I was equal parts scared of and hoping to hear my mom too, but I, I didn't. When my daughter was about three, we started to become convinced she could read our minds. She would randomly blurt out something I had just been thinking. Sometimes I would be thinking something like, I better get her to bed, it's late. And she would then turn around and look at me and say something like, I don't want to go to bed. All are still within the realm of extreme coincidence, but strange nonetheless. So one day, some of our friends were over and one of them said to me, Your kid just read my mind again. So we decided, as a group, to put it to the test. We formulated a plan. My brother would take her into the other room to distract her and keep her busy. And one of us would choose a random object for us to focus on. He wrote this on a piece of paper and we passed it around to be sure everyone would be thinking the same thing. We didn't say it aloud just in case she had supersonic hearing or something. So once everyone had read the paper, I threw it away. We stayed together. No one could whisper to her. We jokingly and joined her in the other room and told her to sit in the middle and we would sit around her. She was very excited because she thought we were going to play a game. So I told her, we are going to all think of the same thing at the same time that I want you to tell me what we are thinking okay she said okay got quiet and waited for us with the cue we all sat there thinking of memories she looked at each one of us only briefly and then said orange kitty tricky that was it our cat tricky that had written your cat on the paper i always found it interesting that she described what she saw not as a word but as an image She's in her late 20s now, and we decided to read minds all the time. I'm just so used to it at this point that I stopped being so weirded out. Cousin's kid. She's supposed to be napping, and you can hear her giggling and laughing. Her dad walks in to see her jumping on the bed and holding her hands out like she's holding onto someone's hands. When asked what she's doing, she responds, playing with grandpa. Who's grandpa? Mommy and daddy's? They were in a second floor apartment, so he's ripping apart the house to see if someone is in the house, checking balconies, etc. Then I come back and uh, asked her what grandpa looked like. He's short with wrinkly and has messy white hair, and he's wearing a hat. I stopped him cold. It was a wildly accurate description of his wife's, my cousin's, grandfather. And... Jumping on the bed, absolutely grandpa thing. The thing is, he died when she was five months old. The couple days later, she and her little brother were at my mom's house when my mom pulled out some pictures to go through them. And when she got to a picture of my grandparents, she stopped my mom and called her brother over. See, that's grandma and grandpa. They play with us sometimes, but 
we shouldn't be scared because they keep us safe. Talk about creepy, but heartwarming at the same time. I'm posting this for my mom, who wanted to add her story. I don't remember the events, but she said she was in another room when she heard me around 3 or 4 at the time having a conversation with someone. She came in to ask who I was talking to, and I responded with Grandma Leah. My mother's grandmother, Leah, had passed away the year before. So, my mom inquires further, asking for details about her appearance. I cheerfully respond with a pink dress and white necklace. Leah was buried in a pink dress with a pearl necklace. As my mom is standing there shocked, as there was no way for a toddler me to know these details, I then tell my mom that Grandpa Leah wants to say thank you for fixing her hair. This is when my mom is completely freaked out. When my mom went to the funeral parlor before the service, she saw her grandmother's hair styled completely different and in a way she would not have approved of. So, my mom fixed her hair and went about getting ready for the service. She didn't tell her mother or anyone else about the redoing her hairstyle. And me mentioning it so casually that afternoon creeped me out. When my son was just three, we moved into our 220-year-old townhouse. As my son has autism, his speech was delayed, so he is only now starting to speak. The former occupant of our new home, an elderly lady, had moved out after her husband Barry passed away. The house is unusual in that it was built like a lighthouse with lots of stairs and just one room per floor, with an attic room on the sixth floor, which we never went up into. The attic was only to be used for storage, so we just left lots of boxes and furniture up there while we renovated the rest of the house. Besides, it was cold and dimly lit, and I really didn't like going up there. I knew that the attic had been Barry's bedroom when he was receiving convalescent care after he'd been in the hospital, and it was quite likely he'd passed away in that room. One night, there was a series of noises that almost sounded like pounding feet from up in their empty attic. It really freaked me out. So much as I was struggling with some mental health issues at the time. Not long ago, I'd been in a psychiatric hospital with psychosis after hearing voices and couldn't work out if the noise I just heard was just in my head or if there was something up there. It was the next day at dinner when my son, who had only just started saying more than one word at a time, shouted, Big Red Barry. This totally freaked me out. We'd never mentioned the name of the former occupant of the house, but as the days went on, we started to hear my son say his name more and more frequently. It was always Big Bad Barry, followed by a word of phrasing and phrase to describe what Barry was doing. Sometimes it was quite innocuous, but one day he shouted out, Big Bad Barry ate her. Effing freaked me out. This carried on for some time, until one day he added a new phrase, a softly spoken, it's tie me up time. I was quite unwell again at this time, suffering from another episode of psychosis, so his words, coupled with the noises I thought I'd heard, were really chilling. I lost quite a lot of sleep thinking about Barry and whether he died up there in the attic and somehow was communicating through the walls. Of course, it was all easily explainable. Big Bad Barry was a giant fish from the kids' TV show Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Tie Me Up was actually Tidy Me Up time, which was said at the end of his nursery group every day. And the noise was probably from the neighbors, something falling over in the attic room. <laughs>